It's not the Chinese version of Double. I'm not about to style my hair. This is in fact Phil's brand new release, The Key. Feel have been rattling through the semi and ear releases with the CC, CC2 and the CC2 Nano or whatever they call it. And now we have their newest release, the Phil Key. Taking you through the unboxing, we have a closer look at this very snazzy case, look at the ergonomics and build quality and assess performance on calls, audio delivery and app support. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a return visitor, welcome back. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for updates on future reviews or visit me at bio.link slash Regencypher. You've got to give it to feel this is possibly the most unconventional unboxing of TWS I think I'll ever go on to experience. The V05 matte paste style tin has an amber border running through the middle with most of the key attributes printed very clearly, albeit in Chinese only. So I'm having to guess a little bit what it says, but hey, TWS is a pretty much universal language. We can see that their Bluetooth 5.3 ready offer environmental noise reduction on the mics, uh, IPX4 water Water resistance supported by the Feel Plus app and offer up to 24 hours of playtime with the case. Above the Feel logo you've got what looks like a puzzle printed on top. Being a fan of Lost this does seem like something out of the Dharma initiative which I'm not going to argue with. And on the back you've got two QR codes, one will take you through to the Feel Plus app and the other to the Feel website. Thanks to the joys of video editing you don't get to see the biggest puzzle of all which was how to get into the damn thing. But once you do manage to solve that piece of the puzzle you get your first glimpse at a very snazzy looking charge case. Next challenge is to try and locate the user manual, but spoiler alert, there isn't one. Instead, you're treated to a double-sided, double-card style quick guide, and underneath that is your USB-C charge cable. On one side, you have the very easy and universal pairing instructions, and on the other, the somewhat more complex touch control schema. And like with Phil's previous releases, you're going to have to go into the app and switch on the more complex touch controls if you want to do stuff like control the volume and skip through tracks. You also get a pretty nice black faux leather drawstring bag, which fits the case perfectly. Although the drawstring didn't seem to work for me, I hope that is not a sign of things to come. So if there's any reason to buy the field key, it is without question the convenient, almost therapeutic case. The shiny metallic disc on the top with the field logo contrasts really nicely against the matte black lid. And whilst the single LED is a little bit inconvenient because it doesn't really tell you anything about the charge status other than the fact that the buds are charging, it's in keeping with the minimalist Bauhaus style design and the USB-C charge connector is located at the rear. The case gives you an additional 19 hours worth of charge, taking the total up to 24. It takes 50 minutes to charge the buds and 90 for the buds and the case. But most impressive is the portability. It's five centimeters square by two and a half centimeters in height. It feels like a fold up mirror that you'd have in your handbag or your man bag in my case. And weighing just 40 grams, it's in that top 10% of the lightest cases which I've tested so far. I took it out with me on a long walk and it passes the trouser pocket test even in skinny jeans. It wouldn't be a feel release really if they hadn't managed to take what is normally a boring matte black bit of plastic and turn it into something aesthetically and ergonomically pleasing. Even removing and reinserting the buds is strangely satisfying. The lid is very well engineered and the magnets inside the case ensure that you don't drop the buds when you're trying to reinsert them at the worst possible time. The case also supports horse switch mode and once again feel have managed to balance style and substance with their case. The design of the key gives the impression that Feel are trying to stay true to that industrial theme but appealing to a broader audience with a more modern rounded edge. The Feel logo is laser etched on the side and on the top and the bottom you have your pickup and ambient mics. You can adjust them with a pinch. The touch controls are just below that top ambient mic so minimizing accidental touches. You've got quite a wide nozzle there protecting the 13.4 mil titanium plated driver. On the inside like with most earbuds on the market you have an opening which facilitates a pressure release chamber offering increased comfort and a tuning cavity to improve acoustic performance. You also got your battery connectors on the inside and bear in mind if you have any allergies then that is coming in direct contact with your skin. It's the one drawback of having a case which is designed with a cockpit in this way. Phil have also shortened the stem length. It's now comparable to that of the Sampeets Air 3 measuring in at 32mm. This is in stark contrast to their CC2 which I think tops out at 40mm. The crucial difference between the key and the Air 3 is in the depth and the angle of the neck. You get the impression that the release of the key is probably aimed at the younger market or for females or for those with smaller ears. 
ears. The deeper neck means that the Air 3 can sit very comfortably and very stable in my ears. And whilst the key are perfectly comfortable, I don't have that kind of stability. The key are quite lightweight at 3.64 grams. Compare that with something like the Transmart Onyx Ace Pro. There's no extra mass in the head to give it that extra support through weight displacement. Despite the Onyx Ace Pro having a much longer stem, I still found them to be more secure than the key. I feel recommend that you wear the buds almost vertically. Even so, I put the key through the shake test and they did manage to fare reasonably well. Although I found that straight after I did have to make one minor micro adjustment. One more thing to mention, the key are IPX4 water resistant. Overall, I think they've done a pretty decent job of sticking to that feel synonymous design, whilst also bringing it up to date and making it feel a little bit more modern. I do feel that they're definitely more suited to those with smaller ears though, so please bear this in mind. So now we move on to the audio performance and sound signature. And like many semi-in earbuds on the market today, it is very much dependent on the fit. The immediate impression is a very bright echoey sound with a slightly extended treble response. This sees cymbals, clashes and swishes very prominent on tracks such as Seven Seconds by Yusuf and Dora Nena Cherry. I found the mids really do take a backseat, even compared with some of the other semi in ear products which I've reviewed more recently. On tracks by Seal and Simply Red, for example, where you have a lot of mid range presence, so you've got bass guitars and slightly deeper vocals, those elements seem to take a backseat in favor of those clashes and hi hats and other high frequency sounds which I mentioned previously. Even on Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, Brian May's long guitar solo seems to be incidental around some of the other instruments. And when we switch genres, it's a similar story with I'm In Love by Kevin Gates, where the hi-hats do take center stage almost to the point of fatigue. So they do need a little bit of adjustment via the EQs. And thankfully in the app, you've got lots of different presets with quite a few of them coming in really useful. Normally with TWS apps, all of the presets sound dreadful and you're messing around trying to find the right sound in either a five or an eight band equalizer and generally you're on a hiding to nothing but Phil's presets seem to be tweaks so you're fine tuning rather than tuning and generally I found that they did actually improve the sound natural soft and metal all being personal favorites really low frequencies so your sub bass I found it was much less prominent than even some of Phil's recent releases comes with sharp and quite fast and simplistic productions like Badass Bitches by Wiz Khalifa and if you switch genre to house Oliver Heldon's Gecko for example that does come through punchy but he lacks a little bit of the rumble with which the track was intended the soundstage like most buds at this price point isn't especially wide it doesn't have a great deal of depth at times there's a metallic feel to the timber and this is exacerbated when you're listening to audiobooks where the reader can sound like they've recorded the story in a concert hall or a big arena and there's little notable difference between iOS and Android but again Again, you have to bear in mind the price tag here. This is a sub $40 headset. Audio delivery is exactly as I would expect it to be at this kind of price. If you push the buds in a little bit closer, you can get a true sense of what feel we're trying to give you. But if you don't have that perfect fit, then it's very difficult. And it's the same story with almost every semi in earbud on the market where they've been tuned with essentially the bud right in your ear canal in mind. And that isn't how semi in ear earbuds wear so a true representation of what Phil was trying to achieve is difficult to convey however despite those constraints the key give you reasonable performance although certainly not market leading and it's not giving you anything over and above something like the Soundpeats Air 3 is already giving you with that strong mid presence I guess it's tuned to give you a slightly wider sound stage than the punchy dynamic Transmart Onyx Ace Pro and it's probably battling it out with the lights of the one more comfort buds too and the Soundcore Life Note 3 S as a reasonable sound that isn't earth shatteringly great and isn't going to knock the Air 3 off its perch anytime soon. Hi, it's Reagan Cypher. Testing the call cool quality in an indoor environment, absolute silence on the brand new release from Feel, the Feel Key. It's a semi in ear release similar to the Soundpiece Air 3 and actually their previous release of CC2. Although it's got a slightly shorter stem, so this is what you would expect in a very quiet environment where you haven't got anyone in the house 
or you're in a very quiet office making a conference call, something like that. This is what you would expect in terms of clarity and naturalness of your voice. That is the feel key. Testing the call quality indoors with simulated background noise on field new release, the feel key. So this is the kind of performance that you would expect in a reasonably busy office environment or corridor in college or school or something like that. That's the feel key. So we're testing the microphone call quality on the feel key. The UK seems to have gone to sleep today because there's barely any cars going past, unfortunately. So wait for some traffic to come past so we can see what the microphone performs like when you've got fair amount of ambient sounds going on around you, commensurate with the previous mic test, which I've done for what seems like about 100 cents of earbuds now and probably isn't far off. So there's a road closed here, unfortunately, and that is probably what's causing the lack of traffic. But still, even so, I would expect a little bit more than this. We've got a little gust of wind now, so that's a, another added ambient sound into the mix. So hopefully the key are dealing with that as you would hope that they would. And we've got a few cars coming past now as well, so that's uh, that's going to bring the test to a close. Once again, that is the outdoor test for the Phil Key. The Phil promote app support in their marketing material, but with the product targeted in the Chinese market, the Phil Plus Global app doesn't support this model yet, so you're going to have to rely on Kiwironic's excellent translation over on XDA, and you can download the APK of version 3.4.5 from his GitHub, which I've linked in the comments below. Now, the app doesn't really give you a lot to play with. The first screen has your usual battery life parameters clearly outlined with images of the case and the buds. The second of the three tabs gives you the option change the EQ settings. As I mentioned earlier, you've got 12 excellent presets in there that really do augment the sound. It also allows for playback control on this screen, but it's in such an odd place that you're probably just better off using widgets on your home screen these days. The third tab allows you to activate full controls, and this is a gift and a curse. The full controls are inexplicably confusing. To increase the volume, you single left tap. To decrease it, you triple left tap. I have no idea who could think up such a wacky control scheme, but they need to retire it as soon as possible because feel no one uses earbuds in this way. If you want to use those complicated controls, you're going to have to carry that double card around with you. Otherwise, you will torture yourself by constantly pressing the wrong buttons. Trust me, I've spent a day doing it. You've also got three low latency modes, which is quite nice, although you don't see them until you toggle the low latency mode button. You've got video mode, music mode and game mode, each incrementally reducing that latency further but also impacting on your audio quality too. Music mode I found was pretty close to lip sync on YouTube and other video playback platforms although game mode still wasn't quite in sync so expect to see some latency on your first person shooters etc. And Bluetooth device switching, well that's quite a useful feature. It gets around the constraint of not being able to support multi-point connectivity by allowing you to switch between your current and your last paired device by holding either one of the control buttons down for four seconds. And when you don't accidentally hail voice assistant, it actually works reasonably well. After you hear the three audible beeps, you get another four second delay before it finally switches. So chances are, if you try and do it to catch a phone call on your other device, you're gonna be out of luck because it will ring off. Finally, the app allows you to update the firmware if there's an update available and to reset the buds as well. Connectivity is rock solid, although I didn't get a chance to test out the Bluetooth 5.3 as my phone only supports 5.3. 5.2 and codec support is limited. You've got SBC and AAC, that's about it. So there's no Aptex adaptive support due to the use of the Air Roa chip as opposed to Qualcomm. So let's summarize the key, it's definitely aimed at the price conscious market and their smaller profile will definitely suit those with smaller ears and budgets. The case is a big plus for the key, feels great and their overall portability is excellent. Sounds a bit bright out of the box and a little bit behind the competition, but it can be improved with the EQ and hopefully support for the global Field Plus app will follow soon. Unfortunately for Field, this end of the semi and ear market is dominated by sound peats and outside of China, I can't see the key changing that, especially given that like the T1 Pro, the voice prompts are in Chinese, so you have no idea what they're saying to you, which is especially frustrating when you've forgotten what triple tap right does. But yeah, if you have small ears and you have trouble getting earbuds to fit, then these might be the ones for you and at $40, it's not gonna break the bank to give them a try. But a snazzy case and unboxing aside, unfortunately the key doesn't bring anything new. Please do hit the like button if you found it useful. Thanks again for sticking with it. 
it. Hope you enjoyed the review. Or even if you didn't like it, let's hack that YouTube algorithm. Hit that subscribe button for updates, future reviews, previews, unboxings, ANC tests, and mic tests. For now, this is Reagan Cypher signing off.